Do you prefer using your local IDE to develop Lambda functions? Well, Lambda now has an enhanced IDE experience when using VS Code and the AWS Toolkit. Hi, I'm Julian Wood, and today I want to show you a new update that makes the code, test, deploy, debug cycle much easier and quicker. You can use the new icon shortcuts and the command palette to more easily iterate on your Lambda-based applications without having to switch between multiple interfaces. There's also a guided walkthrough to help set up your local development environment and also some sample apps included to explore Lambda's functionality. Let's take a look. So to make all of this magic work, I need the AWS Toolkit installed. So this is just a normal VS Code extension with a whole bunch of functionality and the Lambda local IDE stuff is part of it. So if I then go to the extension on the left-hand side, you can see I have the new application builder section and I can then go and open the walkthrough. And this handily has a whole bunch of things. I can check whether the AWS CLI, SAM, and uh, Docker is installed, and the toolkit is going to check that they are installed um, to be able to set up my local environment. I can also build a REST API, you know, initialize my project, select Python, and that is then going to uh, give it a name just for a local file, and that is then going to download the code and a sample application for building a REST API using Python. So you can see I have the template file over here, and I've got a readme file, which um, I can look at, and I can see in the file explorer, I've got all the you know the bits and pieces I need to be able to build this function. So uh, back to the toolkit, you can also see the application builder has been populated. It has parsed this template. And also I can use the uh, command palette to be able to view all the various SAM functionality that is available. So yeah, just back to that uh, application builder, I can then open infrastructure's uh, composer directory from over here, and I can just center that on the screen, and I can look at the details of my Lambda function, and I could make any config changes I want to over here. So that's being able to visually view my application. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to actually um, uh, open the function handler. So here I can see my function code, and I could iterate on this um, locally as much as I need to. So the next part is I want to build this function with the artifacts. I need to set some flags. I want to use a, you know, a cache build and a parallel build because this is going to be able to make my local builds much more quicker uh, for future invokes. And then also a really cool thing is I can actually use a container image. So this allows me to download a container image and to build my application within a container image so I don't actually have to have everything installed locally, uh, which can be super helpful, especially if you're working in various different languages. And then uh, let me save the parameters so I can use that for future builds. So uh, what Sam's going to do is that it is going to then build that application and it is going to then output those artifacts and that's then ready for me to use. So <clears throat> let me uh, close that terminal. And then the next bit I want to do is I want to well, then locally invoke this function. So it opens up a, a local invoke pane and you can see that this all is within the same view. And I can go and actually select an event. So let's say I'm using API Gateway. Uh, it's, you can use a test event or actually I can pick an event object file which has been downloaded as part of this application. So let me select the file rather than the generic template, and I've now got this all uh, locally to be able to use. So I can click on invoke over here, but actually what I can also do is I can locally debug my function. So I can uh, save these settings as part of a debug. I'm just going to give it a, a name as part of my debug configuration, which uh, sets up the VS Code launch.json for doing your, your sort of standard debugs. So uh, back to my sort of single pane, I'm then going to click on the invoke button, or oh, I need to add that debug uh, breakpoint again, because I wanted to stop at a particular point in my code. Uh, click on the invoke button again, and what it's going to do is it's going to do a rebuild of my function, but then it is going to use VS Code's native debugger, and it's going to attach to the debugger, which we're going to see is going to be coming up shortly. So <clears throat> there we have it. I'm now attached to the local debugger. How cool is that? On the left-hand side, you can see I can navigate, and I can see I have the Lambda context object, and have the Lambda event object, the event that, is, that I um, selected from that file, or within over here, and even better, I can step through the code line by line and use the step through debugging. Debugging is really cool. So I've done my local debugging, I will check that my Lambda function works, and now I want to take it to the next kind of stage. So I want to deploy this to the cloud, and I've got two different options for deployment over here. I've got a sort of sync and a deploy, and sync is sort of a, a quick and dirty, while you're iterating on your function, you'll be able to upload that to the cloud, and it does a sort of a uh, quick and dirty um, uh, CloudFormation deploy, and then uploads the function code directly to the Lambda API. So it doesn't have to do that sort of whole build and deploy lifecycle, makes it really quickly. And then the deploy is a standard CloudFormation deploy. So I'm developing, I want to do a sync deploy, so let me uh, select the sync one, uh, and I'm going to specify some parameters that I need over here, and I want to also save them for uh, future syncs, which is going to be uh, useful. So let me specify that. <clears throat> Obviously, you need to pick a region where it's going to go, and I'm going to then uh, pick a stack name, 
and where the artifacts are going to do. And I can, you know, uh, s select some of the different options over here. The watch option means that it's going to stay up and running in the background. So every time I save, it is just going to upload the file really quickly. And of course, I could use a container to do this build if I so wanted to. So um, I've saved all those kind of settings. And then what Sam uh, Sync is going to do is it's going to then run a process. And it's going to do that build. And it's going to then uh, do the initial CloudFormation stack deploy. I've deployed this actually before. So this is just going to update any changes that are in my local resources. So what I can do here is I can actually change my um, return message to say hello from Lambda rather than hello from world. And then I'm just going to literally click the save button over here. And that's going to do a quick sync. And you can see immediately my function is now already updated in the cloud. So hasn't had to do a whole deploy really quickly to be able to iterate locally um, uh, for your function while um, testing in the cloud as well. So that was the sync deploy. I want to actually then do a proper cloud formation deploy um, with everything. So I um, click on the SAM, uh, same SAM deploy as well. I then specify my region again and give it a test name, a, a separate stack name, because I want this to be uh, not my development stack. And it, you know, SAM is going to build the application again. And then that is then going to do the proper sort of full cloud formation build, package everything up, um, you know, go, go through everything and deploy my Lambda function up into the cloud. So it takes a little while to happen, but that's all done, and I'm now finished. So what you can see over here is the application builder on the left-hand side has now been updated. And if I sort of right-click, uh, can, you can see there that it shows that it's got the, it's now got visibility that there are resources associated with this uh, local stack, but also in the cloud. And so I can right-click on that, and I can uh, you know, see some of the different options. I can copy the name and the arm. And also, coolly, I can just invoke in the cloud from directly from over here. So I can grab that same local file that I had beforehand and select that event object. And then I just click uh, on the remote invoke um, button. And there I go, I'm quickly remote, um, remotely invoking my function in the cloud. And it's all visible within the same output. I'm not going to the Lambda console. I'm staying, uh, staying entirely locally within my ID, but everything is all in the same place. So then next up, what I want to do is I want to then uh, search my logs for my function. So I can click on this and I can just, uh, you know, click and say how long I want to go back. And immediately over here, you can see that my CloudWatch logs are available here within the Lambda console. So really easily be able to do everything locally. I haven't had a context switch or move anywhere else. And that's a quick look at the new local IDE experience. Being able to create, build, debug, test, deploy, invoke, and see the logs for your Lambda applications without leaving your IDE. This is one of many developer experience improvements we're rolling out to make developing with Lambda easier. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to AWS Developers for more hands-on technical content. See you next time.